people in Nebraska and used to mean something. It used to mean greatness. And it's Scott Frost's destiny to bring it back to his alma mater. I mean, look at this moment. His first tunnel walk as head coach, week one, 2018. Everything is finally looking up for the Cornhuskers. Of course, the game was canceled moments after kickoff due to thunderstorms. That's not the best omen. But here we go, take two. First game for realsies in Scott Frost, soon to be star-studded Nebraska tenure. And it's rekindling their old rivalry with Colorado, no less. And they're winning by one with five minutes to go. And Colorado misses a go-ahead field goal. Let's run down the clock and get Frost his first Nebraska win. Why are you snapping it with so much time on the clock? Okay then, whatever. Guess it's your defense that's gonna be the one to clinch the game, right? See, you stop them. Great. Okay, well that sucks, but you already proved you can stop them in the clutch. Just do it again. Hmm. Ha. Huh. That was a pretty terrible endgame sequence there, if I do say so myself. Not ideal, but nowhere to go but up, right, Scott? Oh my goodness! Squidward! No, 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 that's not the juicy part. Look at this Anyone can have bad win-loss records. See, Nebraska has plenty of company down there in the below 500 since 2018 base, but this graph is only the baseline. To truly show you the hell Nebraska fans have lived through the past six seasons, let's take the x-axis and change it from games played to one score games played. And all of a sudden, all these teams are much closer than before. That's because if you play a close game, you are probably more or less just as good as your opponent. And the determining factor of who wins must be something other than pure talent. The almighty question is, what is that determining factor? What does being clutch mean? Well, I can show you what being unclutch means. Eight one-score wins and 31 score losses for Nebraska football from 2018 to 2023. That's not just unclutch, it's historically unclutch. Now, we could take the easy route here and call this all Scott Frost's fault, but this can't all be pinned on him, and that's a dead end anyway. No, there is gold to be found if you're willing to dig for it. And this stretch of unclutchness so helpfully presented to us by Nebraska is our metaphorical shovel. Let's find out how you lose 31 score games and six seasons. It's time to quantify unclutchness. Now all we need is the means of which to measure unclutchness and I think I have it. Everybody say hello to the unclutchness matrix. We have four boxes. Offense, defense, special teams, and other. In each box, whenever the one score game loser does something that makes them eventually lose, we put the relevant symbol into the relevant box in the matrix. For instance, if the defense Oops. gives up an automatic first down on a penalty keeping the opponent alive, you get a one in the defense box. If your kicker misses a field goal, you get a K in the special teams box. If you fumble the ball to end your chances to win, in the offense box, we put... <laughs> We'll discover the remaining options of how to lose a one-score game as we make our way through the unclutch hellscape we are moments away from partaking in. But unfortunately, there are four events in my matrix that Nebraska never did during this streak. So let's go through those now. In this time frame, Nebraska never D dropped a pass that could have won them the game. E scored too early, giving the defense a chance. L had a huge special teams blunder that was not a return touchdown. And Q was never screwed over by the ref. These losses were all them. Let's begin. Nebraska drives down the field, including a fourth down and long conversion, and scores a touchdown. Although they miss a two-point conversion, I would have got it within a field goal. Their defense then immediately forces a three and out to get the ball back. Let's see what they do with it. It's intercepted! 
<laughs> well, that's not ideal. And Nebraska cannot stop the run for a first down this time around. That's one score loss number two. Remember, because of the Colorado game from before, you're smart. You get it. A driving Northwestern is halted at fourth and ten, which they convert. Although Nebraska's defense does stop them short of a touchdown. Field goal and Nebraska's offense cannot get a first down on the ground to ice the game. Their punt does go all the way down to the one, though, which means Northwestern needs to travel 99 yards in two minutes just to tie it. Yeah, there's no way that happens, right? Northwestern travels 99 yards in two minutes to tie it. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what we in the business call a prevent defense prevents winning situation. We officially have our first overtime of this video. Nebraska gets the ball first. Bad snap. Martinez try to make something happen. And he's picked off in the end zone. All Northwestern needs is a field goal, which they get. That's three. On our very first play inside five minutes, Ohio State doubles their lead with a wide open touchdown run. Nebraska immediately answers with a touchdown themselves, but they cannot stop the run enough to get the ball back. That's four. Nebraska drives downfield, scores a touchdown, and gets a two-point conversion to tie this game. And they force Iowa into a fourth down. Who goes for it? And Nebraska, why is your cornerback 10 yards off his man for no reason? Iowa then walks it off with a field goal. That's five. Nebraska has a lead, but punts it. And Colorado dinks and dunks for a while, including a fourth down conversion before suddenly going long and tying the game. We have yet another overtime. And Nebraska's defense doesn't allow anything from Colorado. Colorado, who makes a field goal. A touchdown wins it, says Nebraska, consequently getting two no-gain runs in a sack. But at least you can force double overtime, right? He hooks it, and Colorado, back from the dead, wins a classic. That's six. Nebraska was driving down the field to tie before completely shitting the bet on four straight plays and then being unable to stop the run to get the ball back. That's seven. Adrian Martinez scores a touchdown to give the Corn Huskers the lead. But the Nebraska defense cannot stop a nosebleed on the next drive as Purdue waltzes right back into the end zone and retakes their lead. Then Nebraska can't get a single first down in four tries, much less move down the field to win the game. That's eight. A uh, pooch punt? Huh? Gives Nebraska the ball back in a tie game, and they go backwards. Iowa immediately breaks off a massive run to answer, and then... The ball out oh. it's Nebraska ball! Nebraska's got a chance. They start moving down the field to win it, a win they need for their first bowl eligibility since 2016. Mm -hmm. Illegal blindside ball. Oh, for crying out loud. Punt, but at least there's now only 20 seconds left before overtime, which is what I would have said if Nebraska didn't allow back-to-back -back wide open deep passes to Iowa of all teams. And then Iowa kicks the game-winning field goal. That's not. Before we continue, though, I'm not a monster. I know some Nebraska fans watch my videos, and I don't want you to feel like I'm dunking on y'all for no reason today. In the name of fairness. A fair person. Let's take a quick deep tour and indulge in Nebraska's eight one-score wins during this time frame. And there you go. Eight one-score wins. Let's continue. Luke McCaffrey throws a tip drill interception in the meat of the red zone just outside of five minutes to go, but Nebraska's defense does force a stop and gives their offense the ball back. They're able to make their way downfield, but it's clear that their QB just does not have it, and they wait until the very last play to even try and get it in the end zone. All I'll say is there's a reason Luke McCaffrey switched to ride receiver. Hey, and then he got drafted for it. Good for him. That's 10. Holy shit, Iowa. Again. The Hawkeyes make their way down the field looking to take a two-score lead, but doinks the field goal attempt and leaves Nebraska's offense with a chance to win with a touchdown. And Adrian Martinez, who's back now, leads them down the field before getting crushed by a sack, losing the football and the game. That's 11. Nebraska continuously allows run after run for first downs, and an intentional slide short of the goal line keeps this game on this list. That's 12. On fourth and goal, Martinez tosses a touchdown down to cut the score to one possession. And although they do allow one first down on the ground, Nebraska's defense is able to stop them when they have to. Nebraska is getting the ball back at 87 yards in that time span is pretty difficult and they can't get it done. This is actually a new case that I'm going to call they tried. They were just losing by too much too late. 
That's 13. It sure looked like Oklahoma was just going to be able to keep running the ball to end the game, but this shovel pass on third down fails and Nebraska has a chance. And Martinez is sacked twice deep in their own territory. So there goes that. That's 14. Nebraska punts it away with four minutes to go and puts it on the back of their defense to hold their touchdown lead. Oh wait, their special teams failed them before they even got that chance. And then both offenses have chances to win, but go three and out. Ladies and gentlemen, we have yet another overtime. And Nebraska gets the ball first. Adrian Martinez, what are you gonna do? Throw on the slam and it's intercepted! It's picked off! Chester Kimbrough! Fantastic. I do appreciate the effort in stopping the walk-off pick six, though. Not that it ended up mattering. That's 15, which means we are halfway through. Before we continue, let us admire this video of Scott Frost being sad. Michigan is already driving at the five minute mark, down by three, but Nebraska, your defense still has a chance to hold them to just three here. And they do? And on the other end, Nebraska starts driving to take the lead back. And the ball is up, and apparently it had not been stopped. Brad Hawkins has Nebraska, be so for real right now. Are you fucking joking? <laughs> Martinez, you do know that one extra yard at this stage in the game is irrelevant, right? Whatever, Nebraska's defense actually holds Michigan to just three again, and Martinez has yet another chance for redemption. Oh my god, you threw a screen, losing on third and ten with a minute left in the game? Take your L. Well, in this case, it's a G. That's 16. Nebraska intentionally grounds it in the end zone, which is a safety, and then immediately gives up another seven to Minnesota afterward on a run up the middle. They score a touchdown themselves quickly to get it back on this list, but then the game ends. That's 17. Okay, chill out, PJ. You beat Nebraska. Take it down a notch, buddy. If Nebraska had recovered this onside kick, they could have done something special, but as it stands, they were down too much too early. That's 18. Wisconsin Wisconsin continues their legacy of owning Nebraska on the ground with a long touchdown run. Nebraska puts together a good two minute drill to try and answer back and force overtime. That is until they commit a holding penalty, basically giving them four chances to either get it in the end zone or lose. They lose. Although I don't know why they didn't do a couple short passes to try and get some yardage back. They did have three timeouts remaining. That's not very smart. That's 19. Literally all Iowa does is run up the middle and that gets them a touchdown and the lead. Maybe this video is more of an indictment on Nebraska's run defense than anything else. However, Logan Smothers in relief of Martinez does lead Nebraska down the field in response, albeit very slowly. Oh wait, he threw an interception to nobody. Never mind. That's 20. And also gives Nebraska the dubious designation of having eight one-score losses in 2021 alone. Even changing what country we're in doesn't change Nebraska's fate. They're able to stop the run of Northwestern from getting first downs eventually, just in time for Casey Thompson to throw an interception on the other end. This Northwestern team would lose 11 straight games after this win, by the way. That's 21. Casey Thompson rears back and throws a touchdown pass to take the lead. Oh wait, they overturned it, but Thompson does it himself later anyway, and that gives Georgia Southern's offense even less time to work. Great. And they have them stopped on fourth down down two. Great. Well, they give that up, and then Nebraska misses two near interceptions, gives up a chunk pass play, then a holding on defense, and then allows Georgia Southern's quarterback a wide open run up the gut to blow their lead. Nebraska got close to getting their kicker a chance to tie it, but not close enough. That's 22, and that might be the worst one yet. Yeah, you're not seeing things. Scott Frost just lost to a group of five Georgia Southern team at home in his fifth season as head coach. Coach. Is it any wonder the students were chanting fire frost? Well, the administration listened. Goodbye, Scott. It just wasn't meant to be. Look, I'm not a Nebraska fan, if you couldn't tell, so I can't tell you all the intimate details of what went wrong here. I wasn't watching every game and every press conference while this debacle of a tenure was happening. If you haven't noticed through these first 22 games, though, these teams had talent. Adrian Martinez, Wandale Robinson, Cam Taylor Britt, Luke McCaffrey, Cam Jurgens. Hell, they even had Lamar Jackson. Oh, wait, the other Lamar Jackson. Man, someone should really fix that link on Wikipedia. Now, the question remained for Nebraska, would this streak of unclutchness die with the removal of Frost. Was he the only problem? 
Well, Nebraska stops Purdue to force a fourth and one, and Purdue decides to go for it to try and ice the game. They do. Oh wait, Purdue decides to throw it for no reason, stopping the clock and giving Nebraska a chance, which is immediately lost when they convert on third and 11. That's 23. Nebraska has it down deep in the red zone and cannot punch it in for a touchdown. Being down by two scores though, a field goal is fine and they do stop Minnesota on the other side, but now this means you have to go all the way down the field to tie it now and they don't. That's 24. Nebraska gets the ball back with the lead and the goal to not give it back to Wisconsin for the rest of the game. Of course, they do not achieve that goal and fail to gain a single first down. And then they allow a wide open guy behind the safety. Wisconsin punches it in and takes the lead and the win. That's 25. Welcome your new coach, Matt Rule of Temple and Baylor fame. We don't talk about the Panthers. In his first game as Nebraska head coach, Nebraska once again has the ball with a lead and is trying to run out the clock. Yeah! Then they fumble it. <laughs> Nebraska's defense seems to try their best, although it could be that Minnesota's offense just sucks ass. Who knows? And as I say that, Minnesota makes one of the best catches I've ever seen, quite frankly. Like, seriously, that's actually insane. In fact, that catch was so good, I'm gonna call that an O for big oof, because Nebraska, your defense did everything it could. But it's only tied, and you have the ball. Let's see what your new quarterback, Jeff Sims, can do in the clutch. Over the <laughs> Oh, that. Only one long run is needed to get Minnesota into field goal range, which they make and walk it off. Congrats, Nebraska. This was truly a Team L. Welcome to hell, Matt. That's 26. Nebraska is down by 10, but forces a stop to get the ball back, and Heinrich Harburg finds a seam and runs almost forever. They do punch it in, though. Three-point game. And then Michigan State throws the ball for two of their three plays for no reason. Nebraska, Michigan State is literally handing this game to you on a silver platter. Are you gonna take advantage? Ball is loose. It's on the ground. Michigan Why State do I even ask? Go oh, wait, your defense stops Michigan State again, and they miss the field goal. Nebraska has another chance, and they fumble again. Holy fuck, dude. That's 27. Nebraska has the ball in the red zone tied with five minutes to play. And he literally throws it right to the cornerback. And then the easiest pass interference call a ref can make gifts Maryland a first down. And then a couple runs and a couple passes later, Maryland walks it off with a field goal of their own. That's 28. Wisconsin was driving to get some insurance, but Nebraska's defense stops them just far enough out of field goal range to force a punt. Now it's Brock Purdy's turn to see if he can manufacture a game-winning drive. Oh wait, I meant Chubba Purdy. I blame the broadcasters. Brock Purdy! Anyway, Nebraska gets it done on the ground, but can't win it in the air. Now a chance for a field goal to tie it. And oh, thank God it curved back in. Yet another overtime, baby. Wisconsin gets it first and does it on the ground themselves too. Touchdown. In response, Nebraska goes four and out with a false start and interception for good measure. Sheesh. That's 29, and here we go. Game number 30. Nebraska misses a field goal range just outside of five minutes in a tie game. Now Iowa is trying to drive to take the lead, but not on Nebraska's watch. Although Nebraska's offense can't do anything either. Punt. And then Iowa's offense continues being Iowa's offense. Interception. Nebraska, I know it's been tough, but here's your chance, huh? Get points here, walk it off, and make what would still be your first bowl berth but since Nebraska 26. Oh my god. Oh, and then allow Iowa's running back to break all the tackles for good measure. Iowa wins on a field goal. And that, my friends, is how you lose 31 score games in six seasons. Wow. That was one big pile of shit, huh? But wait! Bonus game! Because I take forever to make these videos, we actually have a game in 2024 to talk about, too. Nebraska under star freshman QB Dylan Riola is driving to break the tie, but they can't punch it in for seven. They do, however, get... Nothing. Okay, well, they stop Illinois from walking it off, at least. We have ourselves yet another overtime. Illinois gets some easy passes for a touchdown. Nebraska! 
Alaska get sacked three times. <laughs> <laughs> now that's all the one score games they lost, right? Bonus game number two. Nebraska is down by four, but with the ball and incomplete. And Nebraska's defense forces a three and out. Nebraska is getting the ball back, trying to get their first win against a top five opponent in a while. Trying once again to get their first bowl berth since 2016. Bro. Man, me the day before this game saying I was going to upload this video the day after this game really is the closest I'm ever going to get to sports betting. Well, after all that, here it is. Here's the graph we've all been waiting for. The summation of the unclutchness matrix data we've been building for the past 20 minutes. Here it is. Wait, is that it? No, 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 this can't be the best graph the unclutchless matrix has to offer. There's gotta be something else. Eh. Okay, that's kinda cool looking, but like, what is this telling us? Okay, that's just a column chart. Maybe the unclutchless matrix really isn't that powerful on a page like this. Nothing that equates to the pain we just sat through, that's for sure. And man, that pain. I mean, you've just got to feel bad for Nebraska fans at some point, right? They didn't ask for this. They don't deserve this. Not any more than any other team would, despite what their rivals may tell you. Trust me, I've been a fan of a historically unclutched team once too, so I know what it feels like. There is nothing worse as a sports fan than having no hope hope. You think the last 20 minutes of being entrenched in failure is tough? Try the last 2,680,000 minutes, and maybe we'll have some understanding of what it's been like lately to be a Nebraska football fan. Maybe the point of this video is not to quantify unclutchness, but to qualify it. I can say 31 score losses. Well, 32 now. I can say 32 one score losses over and over, and it'll just fly over your head as yet another number in a sea of them. But to live there, this, that's a different beast altogether. To that end, the unclutchness matrix's usefulness is not that of an analytical tool. It is a literary device. Its goal is not to be understood, but to be feared. To synthesize pain. Because there's nothing more excruciating as a sports fan than knowing what's about to happen. Only questioning each go around, which box are we ticking off this time? Gotta give a massive thank you to all 88 of my Patreon members. If you want to support me making more videos in the future, joining my Patreon is how you can. And if you can't, don't worry, watching my Tulane videos are thanks enough. Speaking of which, you should go do that right now.